Welcome to the Saul's Newsstand News Review for August 30th, 2018. This update is brought to you by the 60 Plus Association and the American Association of Senior Citizens. For more information, visit 60plus.org. If you want to go in-depth with the articles discussed in this video, there are links in the description below. John McCain, the military hero who had a long career as a maverick Republican senator, passed away at 4.28 p.m. on August 25th, surrounded by his wife Cindy and his family. McCain was diagnosed with glioblastoma, an aggressive form of brain cancer, in July of 2017. In September, the Arizona senator told Leslie Stahl on 60 Minutes that he didn't believe the diagnosis changed him, and while he sometimes felt moments of fear, he hoped a simple legacy would endure. In a farewell message released after his death, McCain encouraged the country not to despair of our present difficulties, but believe always in the promise and greatness of America, because nothing is inevitable here. Americans never quit. We never surrender. We never hide from history. We make history. Senator McCain will lie in state at the U.S. Capitol on Friday, a rare honor bestowed on only 31 people in 166 years. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell announced the decision of congressional leaders from both parties Sunday, calling McCain a great American patriot, a statesman who put his country first and enriched this institution through many years of service. A letter to the editor in Wednesday's edition of Crane's New York Business entitled Medicare for All Would Decimate New York Hospitals, President of the Iroquois Healthcare Alliance, Gary J. Fitzgerald, points out the difference between private insurance and Medicare. The letter states, Hospitals and healthcare providers throughout New York remain reliant on government, both Medicaid and on Medicare, for patient revenue. In fact, Medicare is the largest payer upstate because of the aging population. For upstate hospitals, Medicare accounts for 47% of hospital inpatient revenue, while Medicaid only accounts for 15%. Private insurers account for 20% of total inpatient revenue, and private insurers pay over 60% more than the government per day to hospitals located downstate. Fitzgerald concludes by saying, a single-payer health system can only be examined, discussed, and debated when the payer is known, and most importantly, when the reimbursement structures are known. Single-payer that uses rates similar to what private insurers pay downstate hospitals per day would be positive for upstate hospitals. A system based on the current rates being paid by Medicaid and Medicare would hurt all hospitals, particularly devastate upstate hospitals, and likely reduce access to health care in many communities. And finally, the U.S. Chamber of Commerce makes the point that tax reform is tied to lower electricity costs. Thomas Donahue, President and CEO of the Chamber states, the positive effects of last year's tax reform legislation continue to ripple through the economy, benefiting both businesses and consumers in a variety of ways. One of the positive impacts was uncovered in a new analysis released by the U.S. Chamber of Commerce Global Energy Institute this month, which found that electricity customers across the U.S. are saving millions as a result of the law. Donahue goes on to say, On top of this, it's likely that customers will experience even greater cost reductions once the regulations governing the implementation of the law are fully determined. This drop in electricity costs represents real money for the American people, who will then use their extra cash to shop at local businesses and save for the future. This is why each state in the study also sees meaningful GDP growth and job gains as a result of these customer savings. The analysis from GEI shows just one of the ways tax reform is having its intended pro-growth effect. The benefits of the tax law touch every state and nearly every industry, in part by boosting take-home pay for 90% of American workers. By empowering businesses and families to keep more of their hard-earned money, the law is growing the economy and boosting business confidence. To see the details of the study, click on the link in the description below. And that concludes your Saul's Newsstand News Review for August 30th, 2018. For more political news faster, visit saulsnews.com.